Or more importantly, what's in my case. So this video is going to be a list of things that you should always keep with you in your clarinet case. The clarinet case that I have is from Protec, the brand Protec. Um, yes, that is a satanic temple pin. I was just there a couple weeks ago. We can ignore that. This is a Pro Pack case from the brand Protec. There's a lot of pro involved. This is the messenger bag style, but this is not a messenger bag. This is a messenger bag. Um, I'm just going to go over everything that I carry with me to my gigs, to my teaching, just like things that I have all the time with me. You should always have your reads. And I promise you Protec did not sponsor this, I just have a lot of their stuff because I think that they're great. Uh, read case. You should always have a read case with you. I like this read case because it's plastic, there's nothing fancy about it. There's plenty of room for tons of reads to go in. Um, this is a little sponge that I use in the fall and winter, or whenever you turn your heat on, which I will go over in another video. And then I have not one, but two. But two. Not one, but two swabs. One is a microfiber, one is a silk. I don't really have a preference. The microfiber is really good for getting out a lot of spit at the end of your rehearsal. The at the end of your practice session and the silk swab is really good for like in performance use where you don't have a lot of time to swab it just in and out super fast super easy um so yes two swabs you should definitely always have one two is optional i also carry with me a neck strap um i have really bad tendonitis i've done physical therapy and i've since um, been practicing a lot smarter than I used to, whenever I'm performing or rehearsing um, standing up, I use a neck strap. It just helps to alleviate some of the weight of the clarinet. I also have not one, but two clarinet stands. The clarinet stands, this one I don't like as much. This one I like a lot. This is a, another clarinet stand, just in case I'm playing with both my A and B flat clarinets out and there might be an auxiliary instrument involved. That's why I have a second one. This one's not as good uh, because um, this little thing sort of broke uh, so it's not like they're not supposed to move. This one moves. I've had this one for forever. Um, it's just kind of like sort of like a just in case I need one. It's better to be prepared. The next thing I have is a baggie with some reeds in it and also reed rush. I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to do another video about reed rush, but I prefer, there's a, there's a B flat reed in there too, but I prefer using um, reed rush, which is what you can kind of see in there. It's, um, as opposed to using knives and sandpaper, I use reed rush, and I'll do a whole video as to why I prefer that. But reed rush is great because they won't take it out of your case if you're going through airport security. Found that one out the hard way. So my reed case has all B-flat clarinet reeds in it. In this baggie, I like to keep my E-flat clarinet reeds, like teeny... Uh, I don't know if you can... Uh, you know, teeny, teeny, tiny reed. Um, and I also keep my bass clarinet reeds, which are much, much bigger. I like to keep them in a separate little baggie, and I also like to put a little tiny piece of sponge in here to keep them humidified during the fall and winter and early spring. So that's why I have them in a separate little baggie. Two pencils, and a pen, just in case. Uh, but, you know, pencils, really important to have. Do not ever mark up your music with pen. Always do it with pencil. Um, <laughs> I've got some money. Because uh, you never know where you'll be when you, you know, your debit card doesn't work and you're not on an empty tank of gas and you're somewhere in New Hampshire and your debit card's not working and you need some cash. Not that I've ever been in that position before. Metronome. Dr. Beat. I basically carry everything that I need to practice with in my case. Like, I don't have a little area set up at home because I do a lot of my practicing at the schools that I teach at because it's easier and sometimes I have a lot of time in between lessons. I always carry a book with me because you'll never know when you'll have 200-something measures of rest. So I have with me this amazing book. 
uh, it's conversations with uh, this guy and Seiji Ozawa. Haruki Murakami, I've never read actually much of his work. Seiji Ozawa, though, I am very familiar with his work. He was the conductor of the Boston Symphony for a number of years and was assistant conductor to Leonard Bernstein for a number of years in New York with the New York Phil. So I've been uh, just blasting through this book. I've found everything to be super interesting, very candid, really well written. Um, so if you're looking for a really interesting book to read that's about music, I highly recommend this book. Antibacterial hand lotion because I work with kids. Um, these are like all optional now. I've like I've already gone over like all the really important things, but I like to bring headphones with me mainly so that I can practice improvising and um, transcribe like pop songs for this band that I'm in. A couple more pencils. Oops. Ah. I also keep a number of backup reads just in case in. Huh. Huh. Bass clarinet read. Just a number of different strengths and sizes of reeds just in case I lose my reed case, which I thought I did, so I bought another one. So I actually have two reed cases, which is, you know, it's better to have too many than not enough, I guess. I have my favorite reed tool of all, and this looks sort of like a medieval torture device. Basically, if a reed is getting too thin, I'm not gonna actually do this right now, but I'll do another video on how to use this. It'll be like a three second video because it's really easy to use, but if a reed is getting too thin or too soft or whatever, uh, you basically take this, you put the reed in there, and then you snap this down. And it takes like the tiniest sliver off the top. And the reason why I like this and carry it around with me all the time is it's not a knife, so it's not going to get confiscated. Uh, it's really accurate and really old. And um, it's like I've resurrected so many reeds that I thought were dead with this tool. You can just keep clipping your reeds until they're like this big. No, don't actually do that. I've just found that it expands the life of reeds by months. And last but not least, we are coming down to the last item. Uh, screwdriver, because the clarinet has a ton of little teeny tiny screws, so you need a little teeny tiny screwdriver, just in case one of them comes loose and you can't all of a sudden close your key in the middle of a gig and you have to ask the oboe player next to you to borrow his screwdriver and then he says, what kind of oboe player would I be if I didn't carry a screwdriver, making you feel like a lesser musician because you didn't have one. These are cheap. I just bought three of them, like, in a package together for, like, five bucks on Amazon. But you can find these, like, even at CVS or in a drugstore that have, like, little eyeglass fixing kits. So those are all the things that I keep in this front bag. I don't keep much in the back pouch, honestly, um, because it's a little small to keep music and folders and stuff. So what I keep back here during the summer, and I'm about to uh, put these into use because the heat is on now, but... I have damp -its. It's a way to humidify your case and your instruments for the colder months when the heat is on and humidity is scarce. Basically inside these green things, you can see some yellow in there. There's like a sponge that runs all the way through this and you get it wet um, so that the sponge is moist um, and then you take a paper towel or you find a way to like you know, dry off the outside so that it doesn't get on your clarinet and then I just lay them in the case. Sometimes I put a swab over my clarinets, put these right in there. They're really easy to use, really effective. And these are the bassoon kind, by the way. The clarinet ones are a lot smaller. And now we're getting to the fun stuff. Behold! My can't really see that, can you? Behold! The clarinets. Let's talk about the clarinets. Actually, let's talk about one other thing first. I have with me, like most things in this video, not one, but two types of court grease. I don't have a favorite court grease, but I do have an unfavorite court grease, and that is this one. I'll get to why I don't like this in a second, but any sort of court grease, uh, don't mistake it for chapstick because it doesn't work as a chapstick. I tried by accident once. Van Doren is a great brand, Rigo is a great brand, anything that comes in a tube that looks like chapstick is most likely a great brand. 
Okay, um, so I bought this one recently. It is uh, Swiss and expensive and looks like a lipstick instead of a chapstick. You use a lot of this um, and it doesn't like lubricate as well, I guess, as Van Doren or Rico or, you know, whatever brand of chapstick um, corkeries you use. Um, doesn't lubricate as well. The only thing that I like about this, though, is that it smells really, really good. I mean, it, it's grease. Why am I smelling grease? Um, I guess we can just go right into, like, what kind of clarinets I have. So I have two clarinets. One is in the key of A, one is in the key of B flat. A lot of orchestral works and the Mozart clarinet concerto and a lot of other concerto and sonatas and uh, symphonic works require a clarinet and some of them are on B flat and I don't know why. So both my A and my B flat clarinets are wooden buffet clarinets. Um, they are, I believe, R13s. I actually don't know a whole lot about my clarinets because they actually belong to my mom. Um, and they're sort of, I don't know if they can be classified as vintage or not, but they're really old. Um, they are the serial number on them, I believe. Yeah, there's only six numbers in the serial number on these, and I believe now that there are seven, probably. But yeah, wooden wooden buffet clarinets um, are definitely the um, higher end. And I love the blue in this case. It is like so nice and soothing. Um, in this case, is really light, really durable. Um, it's great, you know, it's a clarinet case. It's a lot smaller than my other one because my other one looked like it was from the 18th century and <laughs> it was really in rough shape. This case is not waterproof, by the way, as I found out the hard way. Again, like I find out most of my mistakes, it is not waterproof. So um, just, you know, don't go on like a boat ride with your clarinets. I don't know why you would. Although I've been on a boat with my clarinets for a, for a different gig, but that's besides the point. The only things that are different that I'll sort of go over is that... I play with a Menig barrel on my B-flat clarinet because my B-flat clarinet runs super sharp. So I have a barrel that's a little bit longer, R13, 670, um, still buffet brand, but it's called a Menig barrel, and it's spelled M-O-E-N-N-I-G. And it's just a little bit longer than typical barrels, like minuscule amounts. Like this is probably like a typical size barrel right here, and this is the Menig barrel, and if you put them next to each other, you'll see that this barrel is just a tiny bit longer and a tiny bit wider. And that brings the pitch down a little bit. Um, crap, which one is which? Okay. And then the mouthpiece that you saw me clean in the last video that I did is a Van Doren mouthpiece. And it is an M15. You know, I prefer more like closed facing so I can use harder reads. Um, this gives me a nice bright sound. It's really responsive. Um, and it's really similar to the mouthpiece that I used to play on, which is a Casper mouthpiece. And you might you might know about those. Um, the Casper mouthpiece that I have was refaced so many times that it actually played way, way, way sharp. So I decided to get a new one. Um, I chose Van Doren. I tried, I think, like six of them and finally picked one. Um, and it's been working for me ever since. The Van Doren website has a list of all of the different mouthpieces that they carry and, um, with descriptions of how each one feels and how each one sounds. So you can get a pretty good idea as to which ones you would want to try based off of reading the little descriptions. But, um, you won't really know unless you request a bunch of them and try a bunch of them out. The ligature that I use is... Oh! Uh, this is, that's not the first time I've ever dropped this ligature. I have had this ligature for... Probably... Over 10 years at this point. Over 10 years, under 15 years. Um... This ligature is great. It's a Van Doren. Um, I don't really know what it's called. It's got the cool little V 
cut out in the side there, um, the little logo. It, um, you know, when you put it on, it's got the screws in the front. Some of them have them in the back. I don't, not a huge fan of that. So this little plate in here comes out. You can pop it out. And when you buy this, it comes with, I think, three other plates. One is just like a plain one. The other one has like some little uh, raised dots on them. This one has, I don't know if you can see it. I'm not going to pop it out because I don't think I can anymore. But it has two sort of raised lines down the back of it. Um, I just found that it had the best sound and I really liked it. And honestly, like, I was probably like 16 when I got this and I didn't really put it through a lot of tests as to what the other plates sounded like. Um, I just found one that I liked, stuck with it, and then I think I lost the rest of the plates. Don't do what I did. I do have another ligature in here that's really, really old. And some of my students who don't have a ligature, which, yes, it does happen, um, they get to use this one. And this ligature really sucks. Um, and then I have a Vendor mouthpiece cover that I don't use a whole lot, but it's in here. Kind of looks like a knight in shining armor. Anyway, so that's, uh, you know, what I bring with me. Um, you might have noticed that there's no place in here that I store music. That is because my music is in a giant tote bag. Uh, so yes, if you have a spot at home where you can have all your things set up and you don't need to bring a lot of stuff with you all the time, that's great. Um, excuse me. Uh, if you're like me and you teach at various different schools and you have a lot of downtime during the day where you can practice, um, you know, bringing everything that you need with you isn't the worst case scenario in case I'd rather be overly prepared than not prepared. So I always have everything with me. And especially if you're a teacher too, you it, like it's always great to have a metronome. It's always great to have a tuner. I use an app on my phone for tuning purposes. Um because mine ran out of batteries like years ago and honestly who uses batteries anymore. Um but yeah just having like lots of extra reads, lots of extra things because it's always 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 better to be more prepared than not prepared. Um which is sort of a recurring theme in my videos if you've been watching for a little while. So those are all the things that's in my bag. If you have any questions about anything that I showed you, um, leave a comment. If I missed anything or if you carry something else in your case, let me know. If you have questions about my clarinets themselves, also let me know. If you have questions about anything, life, bikes, instruments, anything, hit me up and I will answer them to the best of my ability. So, I'm gonna put all this stuff back in here and then I'm gonna practice. No, I have to go to rehearsal, but you're gonna practice.